winds up to 90 miles per hour. Reed says mesovortex. Mike on. Like little chops that make him go in and out of the wall right now. That's the reason why he hasn't been able to get any clear air for a while. He's wobbling and we can get mesovortex that we have on shore. <laughs> All right, I think it should be live now. I hope. I mean, that's our final time because it just made landfall on Padre, Padre Island. Is that what it is? Padre yeah, Island? It's my Padre it Island. I think it's the one that goes from Chris to the South Padre Island in near Brownsville. I'm also worried about the Eastern Padre because so, there's a lot of embedded mesocyclones of those, like these little shrimp cells. They're just spinning off the coastline. I mean, it made it to 90 mile per hour wind. Yep, that eye just is starting. It nearly completely cleared right as it made landfall. Oh, There's a lot of embedded mesocyclones of this. Yeah, like let me snap uh, They're just spinning off the coastline. I mean, it made it to 90 mile per hour. Yep, that eye just. I mean, it, but, yep, um, it yeah, nearly um, completely cleared. Every turn is forcing the eye wall now. Once again, it keeps wobbling to the southwest. Yeah, but it's inland now. There's no more strengthening expected or anticipated. Brown ocean effect. Where are you at, bro? <laughs> yes, please. It's low key kind of been doing that all day, honestly. Yes, National Hurricane Center confirmed that P five PM Central Daylight Time that um, Hurricane Hannah made landfall on Padre Island in extreme southern Texas, and the eyeballs also cleared out. Ninety mile per hour winds gusts up to one hundred and ten and a pressure of nine hundred and seventy three millibars. Looks like it's got its eye cleared out again. It was kind of cloudy yeah, earlier it after it um, was getting the banding wrapping around. Um, there's something going on near Fort Stockton, apparently. <laughs> what? I was like, I was looking at a satellite. I just see this like IR like patch southwest of Midland, and I was like wondering what the heck's going on there. It's just random garbage convection, apparently. This thing has, this thing actually got better well defined the closer it got to the coast. When the eyewall, when that land friction got involved, it really shaped itself out. <laughs> There's also some significant storm surge and probably some catastrophic flooding with this. I will not be surprised if this got retired, to be honest. Sustained winds and Recon Dill say on Texas. The eye is still clearing. Right? Sustained winds. Then Juan, Texas. Um, sustained winds of 60 miles per hour. And Noah Boy for 2020 reported a gust of 60 miles per hour. I mean, sustained winds of 60 miles per hour as well. I love the constant de-aliasing failures. It's just the whole left or yeah, right quadrant of the hurricane just goes flipped in colors just immediately. <laughs> I've been doing this since 7 a.m. this morning. Really? And it has not stopped. Even without de-alias, de it still does it. This whole thing is smash Special marine to warn for water spouts now on the eastern quadrant. Reed timbers getting absolutely red. I'm surprised they went with a 5%. The, the banding isn't really that organized unless you like get like really close to the um studio. The roof got ripped off, but it looks like a part of a wall. Is that Reed out there with a broken arc. rib or something? <laughs> yes. He literally went on an airplane by himself. Dude, he does—he does, like he does not stop for nothing, apparently. Oh my god, that bubble home flipped over. Uh, that's not good. 
That looks like a mobile home flip over. I think Reed, yeah, Reed stopped right there. I think he's got to check on them. Because that, that, that mobile home is flipped over. Oh, that. Yeah, that area is basically all mobile homes and like a couple like houses on stilts. down to right here wait, wait never mind yeah but there's still some small trees down nothing significantly large you really don't want to be in those mobile homes right now yeah those are just like yeah, flip over being those flip over yeah they'll flip over and land on top of each other and everything else get a tree that crashes through it and splits in half that kind of stuff. <laughs> There's a 50 mile hour wind gust apparently reported from a handheld anemometer near on the Houston radar. And that was from a. Uh, yeah, there's a spotter network report. Not surprised, yeah. Winds near the Naval Air Force Base, I mean, air station, Corpus Christi, still having sustained tropical storm forced winds. They've been having that since like 7 a.m. this morning. It's been nonstop. <clears throat> Concerns with these mesovorts, that's where you gotta get them. This thing's actually stronger than Douglas in terms of pressure. It's the same wind speed though. Um, on the advisors. Yeah, the, the mesovorts are what it's gotta carry those 100, 110 mile power wind gusts, and that's gotta do some major damage somewhere, probably. Yeah. Wrong place, wrong time kind of thing. That can flip a car over or something else, like high profile vehicles like that. I mean, even when it was only like 60 mile power winds, Reed's vehicle was bouncing up and down. I, I know that like Subaru is in is like a pretty tall vehicle as well, so that probably wasn't helping. There's a random blob of convection that just exploded. Okay. Is it's right near um Port Isabella it appears. Brown ocean moment. <laughs> yeah, there's some trees down. That's a huge branch. Oh, yeah. Damn, bro. That a sharp end. You could stab somebody. <laughs> oh, my God. Calm down, Paul. You're not a murderer. No, it snapped off. It snapped off with the sharp end still. And so it kind of just plowed itself into the ground. So it's kind of like a spike that was just driven. It's like kind of like a lawn darts. Yeah, that's what it looked like. There's like an ambulance or police ahead. Some kind of, some kind of emergency personnel. Up here where Reed is. Looks like you're in the eye now. We're about to. Winds have. Nope, never mind. There goes the eye wall again. Has there been only like what, like two tornado warnings so far from this thing in total? I know there's one like there earlier one in um. There was one confirmed. At, like, like there's a mini shrimp super sale here too. I didn't know there's. I I would, like heard. I I only knew there was like two tornado. I didn't know there's actually a tornado that happened. <laughs> I didn't know either. There's a rogue. Is there a picture of it or is it just like a blob? 
it was like a it's probably just a blob because like pwat values are like 2.6 yeah Or lead, where you got so lucky that power line earlier and nearly landed right on top of his car. Yeah, but Corpus Christi is underwater. It's in high tide. Yeah. Tide right now, so. Typical Corpus Christi things. Yeah, I'm gonna laugh if we just get a rogue tornado in like I mean, North like Dakota. Six, seven foot storm surge. I'm gonna laugh if we get like some rogue tornado in like North Dakota or something because of the slight risk up there. I will keep getting more defined even as I moved in land. Some kind of land friction stuff probably going on there too. There is a like gravity yeah, waves on the radar, eyeball. you could see it's it like... earlier, and it was also appearing on, on satellite imagery. I think it's because of land interaction. Oh yeah, it looks like that eye finally completely opened, so let me check one minute floater. I wish I did a 30 second on this side, to be honest. I noticed they're kind of picky with the 30 second floater imagery, I don't know why. Like sometimes it'll be this, it'll be like thirty seconds for like a hurricane, but it won't be for like a major hurricane. It does it kind of is inconsistent. Eyes uh, finally clearing out, and there's some bubbling. There's a little bit of bubbling convection around it too. Post that in tropical WS. Reed's pressure is dropping to nine seventy seven. Rapidly dropping now. Looks like towards 976 now. Oh, wrong photo. Sorry. Pressure is rap rapidly fluctuating between like 976, 977, 978. He's flirting with that eyeball, that's why it keeps bobbling in and out. Yeah, but look at that eye is almost completely clear. I mean, you can see it good now. Yeah. That's 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 kind of, that's that's a that's a good looking category one. Okay. This has a really good radar presentation. It's not sloppy, by no means. It's one of the better um ones I've seen on um radar. Funny enough, the other one was in the same general place. <laughs> Just a couple Hermine like. Hermine and I believe Hermine. Hermine had a really good radar presentation and oh, yeah. like presentation for Category 1, and that was only like 80, 85 miles per hour. Slightly weaker than this one. Looks like Chris Mic off. 978 millibars on his device. He's right at like 977 dot earlier. That's as low as he's gone. <clears throat> he's in Port Mansur right now. Mic on. Reed, he's just been wandering around these same neighborhoods and stuff, making sure that houses stay intact and that nobody needs help. I was going to say, like, it, before you said that, it was, was kind of weird just, like, going up to per people's houses, but that didn't occur to me that he's going to get out of here. Uh, he's making sure that they're, he's making sure that they aren't going to, like, freaking collapse or something. There's some shingle damage. You can see shingles flapping up and down on some of these better well-built homes, so definitely some Category one wind gust right there at least. <clears throat> I'm glad that's a fairly sparsely populated area though. Like the most of the towns are just like small little yeah, like beach one sides. of the buildings. It was some kind of like I don't know what it, they call it, but hold oh, that was like some orange damage. A power line literally nearly landed landed on Reed's car. Like if he was like five, like two, three seconds later, it would have. Bruh, he would have been toast. It went right on him in the middle of the road and some other chaser, like at this four way intersection, and you just see it coming down. Oh, so it wasn't just him that almost got creamed. Okay. <laughs> Uh, 
I mean, charging I mean, battery. I mean, if you die, I mean, someone else would be there to capture it. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, this is doing some pretty solid damage, even as far as it to the area for Cat 1. I think we're going to be able to see Douglas on the radar soon. Yeah, we should. <clears throat> By tomorrow, we're definitely gonna. This do thing it. looks better than Douglas. <laughs> it, it does, it really does. But still, I'm curious to what Douglas is gonna do. Seriously. I'm interested in Infamous 92L. Um, a deeper developed, like. 92L is looking really models. good in the model forecast. I'm the word. Um, the Southern Guidance Armor, though, keeps it stronger and deeper, probably would take it towards Puerto Rico, places like that. Not the best place for a tropical storm to hit, probably. Um, and then somewhere along the East Coast, or the Gulf of Mexico, somewhere around there, models are kind of struggling, depending on, you know, how deep it is, um, how much it intensifies. However, it kind of wrapped itself up in this moisture envelope, so the Saharan air layer... You know, that ejection is already long gone. I mean, there's still dry air, but there's not as much. Mm -hmm. So 92L pretty much has room to do whatever it wants to. And it's a chunky boy, too. That thing is a mega chunker. It's got to be a mega chunker storm right there. <clears throat> Reed might be getting close to the eye, I believe. I actually think that brown ocean effect may be happening on this storm right now. Um, structure has improved eyewall wise, and you're getting them convective burst over shooting tops. That area is always, over almost always, like pretty, like moist throughout the year. Like you'll, if you like take soundings there, um, in the summer you'll get like precipitable water, like well over two inches, oh, yeah. when I was almost every day. Seven. When I was up at like seven this morning, um, when the first eye, you know, when I became visible, there was like a whole ring of like negative eighty Celsius degree. Um, yeah. 80 Celsius cloud tops just wrapping around it. I mean, it wrapped around in like 30 minutes. Notice that unless it's a major hurricane, palm trees typically do pretty well against hurricanes. Oh yeah, they do. It's natural in the, in their um habitat to experience winds like these every so often, so it doesn't surprise me. But there's some really big branches on some of these, so it, it 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 beat them up a little bit. Structural integrity allows them to kind of bend with a wind on its own free wheel, so it kind of, I don't know, I guess doesn't put as much, as much force on it, I don't know, I'm not a tree guy, but there has to be something with its structural integrity that keeps it, you know. They're like really flexible, they're kind of like, um, it's kind of like a bow, where it would just like bend, like it's very, very flexible, so like bend like almost hor completely horizontally yeah. in the wind. So we, have a, we have a few palm trees here during Irma that kind of just bent over, but they stayed the same. But we yeah. only have like 65 mile per hour wind gust. That's like the structural integrity isn't built up to like hurricane standards, because we're like 200 miles of land. Of course, a gas station roof ripped off while somebody was in it. <laughs> Joplin moment right there. Dude was getting his snacks and a roof ripped off a gas station. My question is, why are you getting snacks in the middle of a hurricane? <laughs> why the hell not? No, seriously, and they kept getting, and people kept going in and getting gas, and the canopy underneath it just started, like, breaking off, and they just kept getting gas. I'm gonna pee. <coughs> this eyewall has wobbled so much over retimer. This thing is bipolar. Like there's a meso vortice also coming on shore though. That looks People like are like vortice. saying this thing where it's gonna like stall for like the next 12 hours. I'm just saying, no, it's not. It's clearly still moving and it continues to move. Yeah, that's or, moving with you. Like, like, it's or yeah. not. like two hours so it really did slow down to crawl, but the forward motion seems to pick back up.
looks like a big tree, maybe a big tree down in somebody's driveway for a moment. There's several big trees down in people's driveways and stuff. Luckily, not on any cars, though. Looks like the radar yeah, just decided not to break currently. Big tree, maybe. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> I really it looks oh like there's God, a bunch of on. um super cellular um storms yeah, on the on yeah, the um, Brownville radar. Oh, yeah, yeah, they've there's been a whole like line of them. No. They've been spinning a whole I'm also watching this rogue one near Brownsville along the it's it's gonna be in it's gonna enter in probably into Mexico though. Wait, never mind, it's coming offshore, never mind, I mean, my brain is just... It's that I one, um, but... due east of that, um, station there, in the southwest of um, Brownsville. Yeah. I'm surprised that, I'm surprised they didn't extend the severe marine warning farther south, but it probably just intensified just a couple, last few minutes. It, the cells are a little bit, a bit more broken up earlier, and they were spinning like... They, they were just low top, they, they had a, it's still this one little cell up, it, it, it lost of a little rotation, but these cells have struggled. There's been some brief transient level rotation, so they kind of just like poof out. There's just like not much mm -hmm. there. And there's a ton of, a ton of, you know, storm relative velocity, zero to one kilometer, but then there's not much instability at all. There's there's like significant low level instability though, which see things feed off of. I think that the eastern side will provide a solid tornado threat. That stuff that band has been spinning for like the past several hours. Like I don't think that band that's currently, currently like over Houston. That's not going to be the main one, but once it starts moving on shore more, you'll start to get the more organized ones, and those are, in my opinion, probably going to be the main um. Tornado this producers. is wobbling nonstop because we did that. Back from the eye wall again. This thing does not know what it wants to do. It's kind of wobbling everywhere now. Probably he's probably also in that meso war. I don't know. He's somewhere near there. Yeah. There's a couple of ones where winds with like completely 360 all of a sudden, and then stuff starts blowing across the road. That's the kind of stuff that you gotta watch out for. Hit your car. Smash you your windshield. Decapitate you. I mean, yeah. There's probably a hundred ten mile per hour wind gusts in the meso wars. But Brownsville is supposed to get the most rain. It's gotten the non-stop outer and feeder bands for like forever. It's supposed to rain like 15 inches there. So honestly, inches. I think that they may retire this name, especially if the flooding keeps up. Because Corpus Christi is always underwater, not underwater. It might even have a bit, it might just underwater. have just as big as an impact in um, Mexico. As it is in Texas, because there's a lot of yeah, like, smaller up. areas in that there is, town. There are some smaller areas in Mexico, but they were forecasting rain totals up to like 15 inches. And those are like Even flat then, areas too. They're like really hilly too. So there's probably going to be a lot of mudslides and whatnot. But yeah, Mexico, it may even last, it. you may even still get some tropical, this is the latest model guidance, you got EMCWF, kind of keeps it. They do notice that the stronger ones really like Florida, kind of more of a Michael S. kind of trap. Mm -hmm. UK met. It all depends on timing and synoptic setup involved with it. FS and them keep it offshore, but I think EMCWF, especially, you know, just... GFS has initialized so bad this hurricane season. It, it didn't even initialize Hannah as a storm last night. <laughs> like, not even close. That's the one thing that GFS will always suck at is, but not like NAM par, but I mean, 
It's still sucky. It's oh, a Nam hurricane. Nam three K. Nam did better than GFS this time. I mean, you know that's a bad thing when that happens. Lives. It didn't even have a closed circulation, and then you have like this ninety mile per hour high in category one hurricane with like a nine hundred seventy three millibar. Yeah, it it got um the Nam three K almost nailed the pressure. It was like a couple millibars off on yesterday's run. I was looking at it. And I thought it was hilarious because I didn't think I it would get that really... strong. Oh, I'm wondering if your thunderstorm warning really. Oh boy. Order size tail. Order size. I swear, if it starts falling here for a moment. But anyway, yeah, ninety two L. Um. I don't know where it's gonna go, but I think that MTWF has the. I think models are gonna trend towards that because deep persistence typically they follow upper level flow a bit more. I haven't checked what the, the one thing I'm really concerned like. about is the the shear, the deep layer shear from 92L is supposed to like plummet to like almost zero, and on the 29th and then on. No, and I mean this the path that's gonna go potentially, especially the deeper it is, is like. You got places like Maria and Irma and stuff. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah, I've been relative humidity. Yeah, no, diagnostic. And then sea surface temperatures continue going up, probably towards about 29 degrees Celsius. Yeah. That is gonna be, that is gonna be a big storm. That, that I mean. Just waiting for the rest of the models to initialize. <sighs> It's like hurricane season thinks it's August 25th and it's not. I mean, this year was supposed to be like, it was like one of the highest, like, few, um... It was the strongest continental U.S. landfall in hurricanes. Last time we had a Pat 1, like, 80 plus miles per hour landfall on the Texas coastline, like, this was, like, I think it was Alex in 2010. Something like that. No clue. <laughs> This is definitely one of the stronger land falling storms this early in the season. My power may go out. Probably from a rogue thunderstorm more than anything. <laughs> Not even like anything hurricane really, just like a rogue downburst. Oh boy, it's green outside. <laughs> Main concern though is definitely flooding with this. I mean, damaging winds are going to be pretty bad at this, but definitely flooding is going to take a cake. Um, that convection kind of just not, it's not really rotating anymore. I got a pretty anymore. crappy, yeah. Let me post like the, oh, that's a noodle, I forgot. Awesome. Oh, or that here to go fish in my water hole, fish rig. Um, yeah, but yeah, that's not the greatest microwave pass, but you can see that thing is completely closed off and well defined. I mean, it's a bit earlier, right when that outer eyeball was. Wrecking the shoreline. It looked like more power lines went down on Reed Stream earlier. I'm surprised they aren't like concrete or anything, and there's just like the standard wooden winds, because I'd expect like something more robust, and especially um, a flooding prone area as well as hurricane prone. But then again, I guess you don't want power to be still on when there's like damaged buildings or whatnot. Yeah, my power may low key go out, but I'll stay on as long as I <laughs> can. But I am very interested in 92L. I'm not too sure about Atlanta, but because models have been kind of, I honest, 
I need to look at the synoptics. What, what, where a bridge is, whatever sets up, what is the upper level of flow, because even at stronger it is, whatever, blah, 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 and see where that's going to go. I don't even know where the ACE index is at right now. I'm probably going to get a pretty good update with Hain on making landfall like this. It's a high end category one. Yeah, but I name storms have been notoriously really bad, just in terms of landfall, wind speed impacts, and everything else. Mm -hmm. So Isaiah may continue with that curse. Like most I name storms are retired. I've always wondered, like, if there's like a correlation, just like the time the hurricane forms, like with its name compared, to, like the damage it'll cause, like what you were saying. I did something that's probably conspiracy yeah, I mean, so theory. Like, I think there's like five to ten names I just don't want that were like just retired and they're like Cat 4, Cat 5, freaking Gotham, Mexico, like... Now this is a conspiracy theory, theory I will invest in. in. Quarter size tail reported in my county. Oh no, there goes my car. Oh no, gamer. I don't think quarter size tail, tail is going to demolish your car, but I mean it would probably put a nick here and there. Let me actually go up there real quick and see what's going on. You're near uh, Columbus, right? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, I'm mad. I'm just gonna um, get that stuff not, up I'm, in North I'm Dakota. I'm really about to get cord. <laughs> Gamer. Extreme um, intercept. Yeah. There's actually, a little bit of a green tint around. And then uh, that's what pretty haley. It's, it's a sloppy. It's it's a very sloppy HP typical Dixie pulse storm kind of base. It's nothing really well defined. It's dineural thunderstorm moment. There's another severe heading my way, moving west, <laughs> like west at fifteen miles per hour. That's pretty quick at this time of year. It usually have like five miles per hour, and they just kind of just sit there and do nothing, yeah. and just die. In other news, there, ex there is excessive heat reports in uh, Tex or not Texas, um, Kansas and uh, Nebraska. There is one of 105 in uh, Hitchcock, Nebraska, and there's this other one now of 106 in um, Norton County, Kansas. Uh, that's no bueno. Well, Christie did they dodge a bullet in terms of the highest wind speed, but storm surge they got like the worst of it. And it will probably continue it for a while. It'll probably slow down once it gets on land and kind of just deteriorate. Oh, yeah, there's plenty of little metal parts popping in and out, little fingers kind of just gravitating around as it kind of just rotates cyclonically like, and. Yeah. That's not East Quadrant had the strongest winds earlier. And probably down here. Um, that still seems to be like the strongest quadrant. Which is not really typical for hurricanes in general to have a very strong southeastern quadrant like it did. The first initial 85 90 mile power surface wind reports translated. Your point a conversion rate came from aircraft recon in the southeast quadrant, like yeah. Yeah, I think I'll pause the stream here. I swear I've on my spotter network. Just report a random...